A lot of people ask, what is a pre-course? So let's answer that question and let's start with the basics. Let's look at the word first. It's called a pre-course. So by definition, it's something that comes before a course. I think it's noteworthy that it's called a pre-course and not a post-verse because if you think about it, usually a pre-course is something that kind of transitions from the verse to the course, right? It's that transition piece. In a way, it's basically a bridge from the verse to the chorus. But note that it's called a pre-chorus, not a post-verse. That indicates that it belongs more so to the chorus than it does to the verse. Why does this matter? Well, I think it matters because it means it's more of a transition piece to get to the chorus than it is to get out of the verse. So, for example, if you have a bridge and then you want to go back into the chorus, you might actually want to do the pre-chorus to go back into the chorus instead of going straight into the chorus. But if you end your song, for example, with a verse at the end, you probably wouldn't want to go verse, pre-chorus, and then just end the song. One of the main roles of a pre-chorus is actually to sort of signify to the listener, hey, the chorus is coming. And you can utilize this fact in a couple of ways. One way is to sort of build momentum going from the verse into the chorus so that there isn't such an awkward transition between the verse and the chorus. Because sometimes the verses that you write don't really naturally transition into your chorus either musically or lyrically. So for example, lyrically, you might have a chorus that's all about woe is me, you broke up with me, how could you do this to me? But the verse Verses actually talk about this really great healthy relationship. That pre-chorus can function as that connecting piece that tips off the listener, hey, by the way, we broke up. Now let me talk about it in the chorus. And then musically, the transition from a verse to a chorus can be unnatural and jarring. Sometimes the pitch range is so significantly different and you don't want to make that instant jump out of nowhere. Sometimes just the chord at the end of the verse doesn't transition super well into the chords that start the chorus. In either case, you can utilize the pre-chorus as a way to sort of warm into the chorus. You can raise the pitch range that you're using vocally so that you don't have such an awkwardly large jump in the pitch range you're using from the verse to the chorus and you actually use it as a way to build up into that pitch range in the chorus. I think it's important to note here that a jarring change from the verse straight into the chorus is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I often use this to my advantage. I actually utilize this as a way to make the chorus pop and explode even more because the verse is so subdued and then the chorus comes out of nowhere and it ends up being much bigger sounding because I don't warm into it. And on that note, you actually can utilize the pre-chorus to actually bring the energy down so that it's even more jarring to go into the chorus. So for example, if you have a verse that's basically a 5 out of 10 as far as energy goes, and then your chorus is like a 9 out of 10, it's absolutely massive, but you want it to sound even more massive. A great way to do this is to write a pre-chorus that actually brings the energy down from the verse. So maybe you have a verse that has that 5 out of 10, but then you write a pre-chorus that's like 2 out of 10. It breaks down into just the piano and you vocally and then the explosion of the 9 out of 10 energy level course is even more profound. Overall the easiest way to think of a pre-course is it's just a natural connecting piece that allows a section of the song to transition nicely into the chorus. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was be sure to drop a like on this video and if you're interested in learning 10 different ways to start writing a song be sure to grab my free guide. It's at songwritertheory.com slash free guide. Link in the description. It teaches 10 10 different ways to start writing a song, five from a lyrical standpoint and five from a musical standpoint, because sometimes we just need something to sort of jumpstart our creativity. So whether we're new to songwriting or seasoned as songwriters, finding different ways to actually start writing a song rather than gravitating to the same instrument over and over again and gravitating to the same exact process over and over again, it can be really, really helpful to change up our process and then we get this whole new creative perspective. So if you're interested, be sure to pick that up. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.